The video equipment I'm covering in this video will make you money. This gear is not the flashiest. It's often overlooked and in some cases, it's dated. I'm not trying to get you to click on affiliate links. So if you want to see what equipment has actually made a video professional money, or you just want to see video gear that you will find useful time and time again as a content creator, then this may be a jumping off point for you. I'll show you each piece of gear and the typical day rate I charge for using it. Later on in the video, I'll share with you the formula that I use to find out what day rate to charge. Let's get into it. First up is the Rode NTG3 shotgun mic. Microphones in general retain their value really well. A mic purchased new 10 years ago is likely very close in quality to the new microphone you can buy today. I've used this Rode NTG3 microphone on film sets, interviews, even YouTube videos like this one. I think this cost me $1,000, but it came with a boom pole and windscreen and a blip. I typically charge around $50 a day for it. That means it took around 20 gigs or so for this mic to pay for itself. I've had it for 10 years. With some basic estimation, I can confidently say this mic has made me somewhere in the neighborhood of 9,000 in profit from just renting it out on shoots that I'm producing or subreading it to someone else. Ah, the Sony FS700. This camera was my workhorse until about 2018. It's more or less a backup camera now, but because it's always brought on each shoot as what I call an oh crap camera, I'm still counting it as in use. This is also the camera I let more inexperienced camera operators I may hire use. I can't remember the exact price because I've had this one for so long, but it was around 10,000. Back when I was still charging for this, it was around $250 a day for the body, kit lens, and a backup battery, meaning it took 40 gigs until this one made money. I was still learning at the time. That's why I recommend when you buy a camera, purchase one that is a few years old. Remember, cameras are like cars. The value takes a dive at the moment you drive it off the lot. If you learn how to use it properly, your customer or viewer is not going to care. JVC headphones. I got these in college and I've used them on just about every production I've been on. My favorite feature is the self-attracting 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. It's a small footprint, it produces an accurate sound, and clearly it's durable. I think these may actually be older than 10 years, but if memory serves, they cost $100 to $150. This is an item that I never charged specifically for its use. It was always included with my basic kit that I need to function as a professional, so it's difficult to allocate how much it's made me. But I've gained immense value. Other items that you may not charge a day rate for could be things like cases, small tools, and others. You can't allocate revenue to them, but you know they've saved you some money. Sennheiser Wireless Lavalier Kit. Similar to the shotgun mic, I've used this on short films and business videos for years. It's sturdy, reliable, and frankly, I don't think I have ever dropped a signal or had interference in all my years of using this. It ran me about $600 seven years ago, and I've charged a rental price of $50 a day, meaning it needed about 12 gigs before it made money back. Usually I would pair this wireless lavalier together with the shotgun kit and rent them both out for $100 in a package deal. I've had these newer C stands for a while. While they aren't quite as good as a Matthews C stand, they are still very solid. Any angle you need to get with a light, camera, or mic, or anything you can mount, you can do it with these. These are about $150 each, and I own three. Typical charging rate is the whole set for $75, or individually for $30. They make their money back very quickly, and you almost never need to replace them. From an economic standpoint, C stands are usually a good buy. They have no electronics and require little to no maintenance. Let's take a break from the list and let's figure out how we get our day rate numbers. Before I get too far into this segment though, I need you to understand that there are many factors like the region you work in, skill level, existing portfolio, and just many others that ultimately determine what you should charge a customer. Also, I have some customers that require line item pricing, meaning every single piece of equipment and labor receives its own price, and they want to see that in the final bill. Is it a pain? Yes, but I'm trying to make a living, not die on a hill. I also have other customers that just need package pricing, meaning they just want prices for the whole project all in. Both of these are a double-edged sword, but either way, knowing a fair and competitive day rate for each piece of of your gear is helpful. On to the formula. Let's say you did 30 shoots in a 12 month period last year where you sub rented a second camera, meaning you rented an extra camera and passed the cost onto your customer. However, you want to increase your profit margin and no longer want to deal with the hassle of sub renting this particular piece of gear. As a result, you've decided to purchase your own second camera. You found a camera that fits your needs for $5,000. Let's take that 5,000 and divide it by the number of shoots you did. Last year, minus 20%. We wanna be conservative here in case the upcoming year is a down year. 20% of 30 shoots is six. So let's assume we will book 24 shoots this upcoming year. 5,000 divided by 24 equals 208. Let's round that up to $210 as your day rate. At this rate, assuming your business stays healthy, you will have made your money back on that camera and 24 bookings. My general rules for buying equipment are this. Number one, if you can't afford the gear outright, meaning cash, 
I advise you to sub rent the gear until you can. Number two, if you can't make back what you spent on that equipment in six to 12 months, it's a no-go. Number three, no one piece of gear rents out for less than $25. I don't care if it's a push pin. This is to ensure that even the smallest piece of your kit is always generating value. All right, let's head back and wrap up the list. I own a lot of camera bags, but this one is my oldest one, and it still performs just as well as the day I purchased it. Currently, it carries my mobile kit, basically everything I need to turn my phone into a vlogging machine. But this bag carried cameras, grip gear, hard drives, doesn't matter. It has kept whatever I stored in it safe and easily accessible. This cost me about $150 when I first purchased it over 10 years ago. This is another item that isn't so much about how much it makes you, but it's about how much money it saves you by keeping your gear safe and readily available. I recommend that when you buy a piece of gear, budget for an appropriate case or bag for that specific piece of gear. You'll save yourself a lot of anxiety. I have three three of these Davis and Sanford tripods. Are they the best? Not even close. Frankly, these ones annoy me, but they are reliable, sturdy, and again, at a price point of $150, at least when I purchased them, I don't care if they break. These have been on weddings and numerous multi-camera shoots. Typically, I rent these tripods out for a gig at $25. Similar to C-stands, they make their money quick and have low maintenance. All that said, if there is one piece of gear that is exempt from the six to 12 month rule, it's a tripod. A quality tripod should last you decades and you will make your money back on it many times over. Every good three-point lighting setup requires a key light, so I purchased a 300X around five years ago for about $1,000. This light is bright, bi-color. It can sync to your phone as well as other aperture lights. It even comes with its own bag included, which is really a nice touch. I think the softbox I purchased was another $100 or so. I typically rent this light out on my gigs for $100 a day. Easy math there, 10 gigs in, and I made my money back. These Rokinen Prime lenses are EF mount, and they've done me a great service. They're a little banged up, but still solid. I probably purchased them in the neighborhood of $1,300 to $1,500 since they were bought as a set. Usually I don't build these separately. Very often these are just included in whatever camera kit I was bringing. But since these are well over 10 years old, I have no doubt they have made me my money back many times over. And with adapters for various lens systems, you can keep using these regardless of where lens technology goes. All right, we're in the home stretch. I have two Pelican hard cases. This large one, which I've mainly used for cameras, but nowadays I use it for my comms, and this smaller one for my lenses we just mentioned. These are great for travel, or if transportation is involved where your gear might get tossed around. Also, you can always buy a new foam cutout and you can repurpose it for any number of new equipment you acquire. Now, in terms of what's made me the most money, uh, you know, I'm gonna have to say the audio gear, through a combination of the higher rental rate and longevity of the equipment, you can make a lot of money on it. Following that would be lighting and grip gear, and then camera is going to be off in the distance. You know, I, I, I'd highly recommend that if you're building out your kit, that you build out a basic three-point light kit, invest in good quality audio, grip, and lighting gear. And then if you have to cut back on something, I suggest cutting back on the camera itself. There's always going to be a new camera. Don't be afraid to get a model that's a few years older. And if you need a higher-end camera, or you just need an additional camera, or you just want to play with a new camera, renting is always a great option. That does it for now. Show some appreciation below with a like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.